City of Houston getting ready for its new plan to crack down on homelessness, a ban on homeless uh, encampments, but the plan itself has hit a bit of a snag. Channel 2's Jake Reiner is live now at the location of one of those encampments downtown, so he's joining us with what the city is doing now. Jake? The mayor originally set a date for Friday, May 12th, to enact this homeless encampment ban, but they have not been able to come up with the $2.1 million set aside to do that. So now Friday, May 12th, is just a warning date instead of the ban date. Safety it is not good. It's not safe for you out here. Siandra Johnson knows firsthand at the hands of her ex-boyfriend, she says. It all happened right here on Sunday underneath the 59 overpass at Cleburne. I was assaulted by my ex-boyfriend and his girlfriend, she pulled a gun on me and his other friend jumped on me and, black, and they both messed up my face. According to her, they also fractured her arm and broke two of her fingers. She's still using what strength she has left to pack up and move out of this so-called tent city. She says she's been in contact with the Star of Hope. Move forward with just getting, you know, counseling, getting myself together and getting a job. All of the tents you see here popped up recently. The mayor and city council say it wants to place 500 homeless people in permanent housing. But with cuts to a recent HUD voucher program, they'll have to find the funding elsewhere. And we're looking internally. Uh, to try to uh, find the additional dollars that we would need, that $2.1 million, to finish out our goal. Johnson says she hopes the mayor makes good on his promises because so far, in the time she's spent on the streets, she hasn't been able to get the help she needs. How can America help America if America doesn't assist America? The goal the mayor was talking about is six months to house 500 chronic homeless people. And the Houston Coalition for the Homeless says that there are 1,500 shelter beds available in the Houston area. A lot of the folks we've been talking to out here say that they can't find any shelter. But if they say that they are responding to the mayor's encampment ban, then shelters across the area have agreed to open up space. That could mean anywhere from a room to a cot on the floor. And they say that anyone who is homeless should be going to those shelters so that they can find you when they do get the funding for that permanent housing. Reporting live downtown, I'm Jake Reiner, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Right, Jake, thank you. A developing story tonight. The man accused of killing his sister-in-law will remain in custody without bond. 25-year-old Moise Ayala was in court this morning on capital murder charges. According to court documents, Ayala confessed to killing 23-year-old Zuleika Hernandez. Investigators say Ayala allegedly wanted revenge after Hernandez reported his brother for domestic violence and he was sent to jail. Hernandez was found dead in her southeast Houston home last month. An investigation is underway at a high school after a student brought a gun to school. It happened this morning at Waller High School on Field Store Road in Waller Spring Creek. The district sent a letter to parents saying a teacher received a tip from a student that another student in the alternative learning classroom had a gun on campus. School officials immediately confiscated the weapon and officers arrested the student. No word, word yet on any charges, but the investigation does continue. Turning now to our weather, it was pleasant, a little overcast out there this morning. Yeah, soon though, the chances of rain are going to increase. Those clouds do have some, some water, some yep. stuff in them to make rain. Chief yes. Meteorologist Frank Billingsley has more on that. But you know what? That rain comes with dry air behind it, so that's the upside. And it looked right. like it was going to rain today for a while, didn't it? You know, it? it got a little cloudy, more yeah. humidity than anything else, which makes it feel more like 84, 85, and 86. Actual numbers in the low 80s, but it is certainly warm and humid out there. I want to point your attention to this business out in West Texas near Childress. A tornado watch in effect until 10 o'clock, but we'll, look what we've got here. This is a tornado, and this is confirmed. Look at that hook. When you see that blue is hail with that. When you see that kind of a hook there, just to the southeast of Childers. That's a tornado on the ground. So we're going to hear more about that as the afternoon wears on. So hopefully folks have certainly gotten the word on that. But the watch continues until 10 o'clock. This low spinning here in New Mexico, that's what's going to continue to move across to our north. That drags in a front for us as we go into tomorrow night and Friday morning. So we're going to look for the better chance of showers then and possibly a thunderstorm or two. Right now, not much going on, just a little humid out there, and it is certainly on the warm side. So that continues. In fact, for the better part of tomorrow, it's rinse and repeat, and then a few showers are on the way, but it means a beautiful Mother's Day weekend. All of it is straight ahead in weather. Lauren?
look forward to it. Frank, thank you. Now to news around Texas. A final vote is expected today on whether or not state funded adoption agencies will be allowed to turn away non Christian, unmarried or gay prospective parents. Late last night, the House voted 94 to 51 to preliminarily approve the Freedom to Serve Children Act. It would allow adoption firms receiving state money to reject applicants on religious grounds. The bill's author says it is designed to protect face based organizations from potential lawsuits. Critics say it allows the organizations to discriminate with taxpayer dollars. For the first time, we're hearing from the family of the woman who was kidnapped, raped and murdered back in 1991 after her convicted killer was taken off death row. This morning, the Texas Attorney General's office granted Robert James Campbell a new punishment hearing. If that happens, he would be resentenced to life with the possibility of parole. After the announcement, the cousin of Alejandra Rendon spoke, saying he doesn't like the decision, but accepts it. To me, this is a second chance in life for him. Doesn't matter that I wanted execution for him. He's being given a new lease in life. I hope Robert James Campbell takes advantage of that. Today's announcement comes after a recent U.S. Supreme Court decision regarding a defendant's intellectual disability and the death penalty. Local leaders are reacting to President Trump's decision to fire FBI Director James Comey. Earlier today, Congressman Al Green called for a bipartisan independent investigation into the president for obstruction of justice. This president has demonstrated time and time again that he will play loose with the facts, that he will take liberties with his belief in terms of what the law is. Also today, Senator Ted Cruz released this statement saying the director of the FBI needs to be above reproach with an unquestioned reputation for fairness and impartiality. Unfortunately, Mr. Comey had lost the confidence of both Republicans and Democrats and frankly, the American people. Well, today the White House said that the president had considered firing Comey since his first day in office, but Democrats say it's just a ploy to slow the investigation into the Russian election ties. Blaine Alexander has it all covered from the White House. Well, Keith, the White House has made it clear that they wanted to begin the search for a permanent replacement as soon as possible. We know that as of today, there are at least five people under consideration. We want answers! We want answers! With outrage growing over the ouster of FBI Director James Comey, President Trump today defending his decision. Very simply, he was not doing a good job. That's the White House true. pointing to Comey's controversial handling of the Hillary Clinton email investigation. She would have fired Comey immediately, and the very Democrats that are criticizing the president today would be dancing in the streets. Perhaps more controversial, the timing as the FBI investigates possible ties between Russia and the Trump campaign. This amid conflicting reports that only days ago, Comey requested more resources for that investigation. That has Democrats crying foul and demanding an independent prosecutor. There is a clear and present danger of a cover-up. It certainly appears that the president is trying to frustrate this investigation, trying to upend it. The White House insists Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein recommended Comey's firing. The president, over the last several months, lost confidence in Director Comey. The DOJ lost confidence in Director Comey. For President Trump today, an Oval Office meeting with Russia's top diplomat and Russia's U.S. ambassador at the center of the Russian investigation. No American media allowed inside. In a tweet of his own, the president lashing out at critics of Comey's termination, promising when things calm down, they will be thanking me. And the now ousted director has been invited to testify before the Senate Intelligence Committee next week. At the White House, Blaine Alexander, KPRC Channel 2 News. Hollywood action star and former pro wrestler Dwayne The Rock Johnson is considering a run for presidency. He told GQ magazine that a run for the White House is a real possibility. Johnson is not revealing much about where he stands politically, but did oppose President Trump's proposed travel ban. A new gaming device made right here in Houston. Coming up, I'll look at that device and how it fared with Houstonians. And a brawl on board a flight from Dallas is caught on camera what may have led to that fight. watching Channel 2, Houston's home for news. Caught on camera, we have new video of a fight that broke out on a Southwest Airlines flight just a few days ago. The video shows a brawl break out as passengers unload after their arrival from Dallas. Screams can be heard in the video as one woman shouts, what's wrong with you? A passenger says the whole incident began when one of the men turned around in his seat during the flight and made a comment about the woman seated behind him, quote, messing with his chair. 
One local company wants to help people create entirely new games. Channel 2's Chip Brewster was near downtown where he visited the creators of this idea. For about a thousand years, dominoes have been used to create games. It's known as a generic gaming device, just like dice or cards. Well, now the newest member of that family has been created right here in Houston. We're playing a game called Rings. Neil Murphy is the mind behind Cetus. So every Cetus tile consists of, uh, of six sides, and each side has five spaces. And um, of the spaces, between one and three of them are darkened. Those are called pips. 60 tiles come in a set, each of which has a unique pattern of pips. Though similar to its generic gaming brothers, Neil believes far more games can be created using Cetus. This is a more versatile gaming device or gaming system um, than, uh, than has been done previously. It's one thing to play with its creator, but how would this game do out in the world? To answer that question, we hit up a local lunch spot where we found Melissa and Angie and Patricia and Jerry May. We handed them the bag without any explanation and watched them go to work. First thing we found, there's a bit of a learning curve. How's it going so far? <laughs> this is a horrible game. And how's it going so far? Uh, confusing, <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting. It's like, I, we, don't, we don't know what to expect, yeah. Because yeah. you've never seen anything like yeah, this before. No. Uh, no. But after just a few minutes, both groups had figured it out and were actually having fun. It's going great. Okay. We've cracked the code and now we're on um, a good streak here. We know how to play the game. It's like playing checkers in a way or, or playing chess. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's very... It's simple gameplay, but you have to think a lot. Yeah, you do have to think a lot. Are you having fun now? I'm okay now. <laughs> <laughs> if we've piqued your curiosity and you want your own set of set, unfortunately, they're not being sold anywhere. Instead, you'll have to check out their Kickstarter campaign, which is running through the 26th of May. In Houston, Chip Brewster, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, time's a ticket. Mother's Day is now just four days away, and we want to see a picture of your mom. That's right. You can send those pictures to us using our Click 2 Pins app, and we might put your picture on TV. To download the app, search KPRC in your app store. Yeah, as long as, long as Frank keeps that on his forecast, we'll all remember when Mother's Day is. I know. <laughs> click 2 Pins. You, you yes. reminded him. Yes. <laughs> four days. Four days four again. Days, four days. Yeah. Uh, it's almost always on a Sunday. <laughs> That's true, you know. Just I think about it every always year. is. Yeah. <laughs> it's always on a Sunday. Yeah, in May, right? In yeah. May. In May. <laughs> all right. We're ready. This is a pretty shot here. Speaking of click two pins, look at the crepuscular rays. That was last night in Ooh, Brenham. Crepuscular. Yeah, wow. when they do that Big thing. Big word, Frank. I call it, you know what? I just, I call them Hallmark card rays. Okay. <laughs> easier to say. So much easier. It just looks like one of those greeting cards, but they're really pretty. Marianne Moran. So she sends in some great click two pins. So thank you, Marianne. Air quality today, moderate. Grass was in the moderate range, uh, low for everything else. So that's at least some help. And look at that. Well, that's a zoo shot, but you know what? If Galveston had a zoo, that's what it would look like. 81 right right now. Southeast winds at 17, 83 here in Southwest. Southeast winds at 17 as well. Humidity's up, so it's feeling just about two, three degrees warmer than the actual temperature, but really not bad. Low 80s, 82, 84, 85 in Brenham. I wouldn't want to paint the porch on the uh, an afternoon like today, but what the heck? It's not as bad as it's going to get. That's for sure. We have that southeast wind 16, 17 miles an hour to give us a bit of a breeze, so that's nice. Continue to see these temperatures fall into the low 70s overnight, but that's as good as it gets. 70 in Livingston, 71, 73, 74 downtown, not terribly cool. And then highs tomorrow, same situation. In fact, Thursday's a rinse and repeat of today. Things change as we get into Thursday night. Here's a look across the state. There's that storm that continues to move off toward Oklahoma now, producing a tornado. So we'll keep an eye on that. And there's that low spinning right there around Albuquerque. So the low is going to continue to move off to our north. And that's where the real brunt of this is going to be. So this will sneak in here. We may catch a scattered shower or thunderstorm as far as maybe some severe weather. But generally, the action is going to be from Little Rock to Shreveport and then right across Lufkin and to the north. And it doesn't last long. This is 10 o'clock Thursday pushes out of here very, very quickly. So it's not a huge uh, maker of severe weather, but I think we'll get a little rain out of it in, in the meantime. And behind it, beautiful, low humidity, lots of sunshine as we move into the weekend. Here's a closer look for Thursday. That's eight in the morning. More the humidity is being reflected, but we like yesterday we saw a few sprinkles out there. We'll continue to see those into the afternoon. And now here comes the front. That's 10, 1030 on Thursday. There's Huntsville on up toward uh, Trinity County. Continues to move pretty quickly on into Louisiana. May catch a shower behind it. Six o'clock in the morning on Friday. There's 10 a.m. and then we're done with it. And obviously.